Hi, I'm Dave Epstein. Welcome to Growing Wisdom. Fall is just a perfect time to paint homes. And painting and gardening, what do they have in common? Well, not a lot, but if you're a gardener, there's a few things I want to share with you about protecting your plants when you paint. So the first thing is, is that most of us have plantings along the foundation. And when you have a painter with ladders and he's up there painting or she's up there painting, you definitely want them to be careful with some of those tender plants. One of the tricks I've learned is that you can actually take something like a big pot and cover the plants. So you could take something like this plastic pot, and I have these miniature boxwoods here. You're going to have to paint really close to this wall, so we can just cover the ones that are closest to the wall like that, and now they're protected. And if you talk to your painter and say to him, there's some tender plants under here, just be careful, that way they don't get damaged. Another thing you want to do with protecting your plants, especially things that are evergreen, like your rhododendrons or again your boxwoods, is cover them with a cloth because the paint will stay on the leaves and it will stay on the leaves for a couple of years. Unlike perennials, which if they get paint on them, they'll come back next year without the paint. Something like the evergreens, the paint may stay on there for a while. Also the trunks of trees that may be close to the house, you want to be careful to protect those as well because you don't want any paint on there. So this area of the house, you can see the windows have the plastic on them so we don't ruin the windows. But we've got the perennial garden here, and one thing you can do is you can get in there and you can just cut back the perennials underneath where the paint's going to be. Because it's perennials, this will come back next year, and it's fall. Remember, in the fall, the perennials are kind of going by anyway, so it gives you a good chance to cut the perennials to the ground. Now they can get in and paint the house successfully, and they're not going to damage the plants. So here's an area where, of course, they've got to paint, and I've got this really small rhododendron. This is a very choice plant. It's a little bit rare, and I want to be careful about it. So I could cover it up with one of those big plastic pots, or the other thing you can do is you can, on something really small, if you get in there, and it's so tiny, right? What I can do is just take this out carefully and put this aside, so now, this won't get damaged, and that's important because look how small this is, and he could accidentally step on this or break a couple of branches. Once he's done painting, I can move it back, and we'll put it back where it belongs. You know, something else you can do with your plants if they're spread out a little bit, you know, plants have a little bit of give to them. If you do it carefully, you can take some string or some twine, and you could take something like this roadie and pull it in a little bit and just tie it away from the building. So if we can get this away here, it'll give the painter a little more room to get back and be able to paint this. Also, remember trellises and things like that. You may have to take off. This is an old clematis. You may have to take that off and then pull the trellis away from the house so you can get behind it, then put it back. With some of the vines that climb up, especially things like clematis that are more a perennial in nature, don't worry if you need to cut it back to the ground. So another thing we gardeners use is water a lot, and be sure you do things like cover up the spigot. You know, you want to cover this up because you're going to be watering your plants all summer long, and if you see that paint on there, you know it's going to annoy you. So don't forget to cover up some of those extremities, even take the hose off, move it away from the house as you're continuing to paint. So as gardeners, let's talk color a little bit, and it's a very personal thing, the color of your home. Here's my take on color. Choose a color that blends in with your environment a little more rather than standing out. So if I had painted the house, say, red, the house would take away from the gardens. I've chosen this sort of neutral, khaki, greenish color. And what that does is it blends in with the rest of the plants. Some of the plants, as a matter of fact, actually start blending in against the foundation. That could be a problem if the color matches too closely all of the plants, then you don't see the plants. I really like the way the pink of the roses pops against the house. If the house were red or yellow, you wouldn't get that same pop. So in terms of your own design, as you're thinking about what you like, what colors you like for flowers, if you love yellows and oranges, don't paint your house something that's close because it won't stand out. If you like greens and blues, maybe go with a yellow house because the greens and blues will stand out a little more. So you may not think that painting a house and maintaining a yard are really connected, but it's all part of that outdoor space that you're trying to create. And I've given you a few tips to help make the job of painting that much easier on your plants. Come back every week here at Growing Wisdom.